divine truth feedback. Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Janie Hope Williams on the subject of New Age philosophies and God's laws. The session was recorded on the 22nd of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. We're back from our break <laughs> and continuing our personal feedback session for Jane Hope Williams. Mm. So let's get into our discussion of the law of cause and effect. Yes. So <laughs> each thought, emotion, word or action, whether of God, a person, a spirit, <laughs> who is just a person who's no longer on earth, yeah. Or by natural events yes. that happen within God's universe. Yes. So all of the thoughts, emotions, words and actions related to any of those It's things. not just thoughts, words and actions. It's also all the material in the universe. Yes. Is governed by this law. Is it governed by this law. Hmm. But any action, thought, emotion or word taken by any of those entities in the universe. Including any material. Including any material or natural yeah, event. Yeah, like you water mean? or any, yep, any yep. material, any, anything any, that occurs in nature. Yep. yep. Um, will always result in immediate and long-term effects, whether humankind are conscious of that effect or not. Correct. Yeah. So that's the law. It's sort of like a brief summary of the law of cause and effect. Yeah. Yep. So now, I've talked about that law in detail over, I think it was over a day or two days, in some presentations I think I did in 2012 or 13. Yeah. Um, so we have talked a lot about the law in those particular, in those particular talks. Yeah. But that's a basic summary of the... So, so the, the law of cause and effect doesn't just apply to humans. No. It doesn't just apply to, you know, the, the living creatures in the universe. It also applies to matter in the universe. It, it's, it's, a, it's a law that governs all material, physical, spiritual or soul-based material mm -hmm. so so it's not a law that's specifically designed to um by god to only impact the human soul mm -hmm. it's a law that is greater than that it has well when we say greater than that it's a, a law that has far more far-reaching consequences than just governing the soul-based uh or spiritual interactions of a person so it actually um, impacts upon the spirit body of a person, the physical body of a person, yes. the natural environment around a person. Yes. Um, and as you said, all matter within the universe. Yes. For example, if you boil water, it mm -hmm. turns into steam. That you could say the effect, steam, yep. is has a cause, the boiling of water. Yeah. Right. So so all all the, the, from a scientific perspective, this law applies to so many things. It, it, it is, a, is an all-encompassing governing law that applies to all things material. And, uh, and the soul is a material that God created in the universe. Yeah. And so it also then governs the human soul. So are you saying then that for any occurrence, any process, any happening, anything that's existing... Always has a cause. Always has a cause. <laughs> yes. It is, that is an effect and there is always, always a, cause a cause that we can trace that is scientifically traceable. Yes. So for everything that we do, every word that we say, every yes. thought that we have, every action we take... Yes. That is the cause of an effect sometime in the future, no, but no, that even, in even, itself even is the, an effect. <laughs> correct. Even the thoughts we have are effects. Yeah. Right? Even the emotions we have are effects of something that's yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, so, the, so, and they all have causes, other emotions which have caused them, yeah. other things which have caused them. So, so it's so, like a long chain, really. Is that what you're saying? There's yes, a cause and, and, and this effect, is the and that thing becomes a cause which becomes an effect. Oftentimes. Yeah. So you often you'll have one thing that get caught. So you can have a small, tiny event, mm -hmm. for example. Um, you know, and, and now they understand like chaos theory to be sort of based around this particular principle, but, yeah. but it is a law of cause and effect. There are some things that you just have to have one tiny little thing added and all of a sudden a whole series of events will occur that weren't possible to occur without that one tiny thing just being added, that tiny yes. ingredient, if you like, that tiny cause yes. being added to the, to the event. Yeah. Right. So, so why, why do we war on earth? 
on Earth mm -hmm. because there are a whole heap of events that are occurring that trigger certain conditions to exist. Mm -hmm. And then the emotional condition of people, which has already got a predisposition towards uh, not forgiving anybody mm -hmm. and wanting to revenge, uh, be and vengeful seek, yep. and mm -hmm. seek revenge. And, and as a result of that, the, I, once the conditions exist and the people's emotional condition already exists, the two combine to create the event. The event, yep. the effect. Yeah, the effect. And so the law of cause and effect is a very, very, has a very large scope. And what I love about the law itself is that everything that's ever happened and everything that will happen will always have a reason why it happened. Mm -hmm. and, and this is God's intention to help us understand that there is always a relationship between what happens and why it happens. Yeah. And, and this is a loving thing to do mm -hmm. in the universe. This is a very loving law because imagine if things happened and we had no idea why they happened or, or, we or that they out. inconsistently yeah. happened. Yes. And, and I've said this before. Imagine if, you know, one day you walk out and you fly off into outer space yeah. and the next day you walk out and you're glued to the ground, you can't move all day, yeah. you know, because gravity has changed. Imagine if, and that's just from one law being inconsistent. Yeah. Imagine if, the you know, one day you, one effect, for instance, a person gets cancer in the left breast mm -hmm. and that's the effect. Let's say one day one of that effect has been caused by one thing and then the next day it was caused by another thing. It would be terrible. You'd never yes. trace down, you'd never be able to trace down or repair or fix the underlying problem. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's such a loving law. Yeah. yeah. And really scientific inquiry is sort of an expression of um, humankind trying to interact with God's laws, they could do it in a much more extensive way, but of they course. are, they're trying to find causes for things all that they're observing. Yes. There's things happening, there's reasons. What is it? In fact, in fact, the whole scientific principle mm. of discovery that's yeah. currently engaged, which is a process of experiment to prove its results, yeah. would not be possible without the law of cause and effect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're engaging So, so with none law, of the yeah. things that we have on this planet currently that we've discovered through a process would ever be discoverable if yeah. the law of cause and effect wasn't working consistently. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, the law itself also implies by its very operation that we're discussing that attempting to remove effects without addressing causes yes. <laughs> um, of those effects the causes of those things that are happening yeah. is pointless and fruitless and it can never work. Correct. So isn't that wonderful? We know mm -hmm. now how to address any problem. We know that if we find its cause, then the problem can be solved. If we do not find the cause, then the problem will never be solved. Yeah. And that applies to some of the most complex problems we face as humanity on this planet, mm -hmm. and also some of the most simple problems that we face in our day-to-day -day life result about our health and well-being. Yeah. It applies, it has application right the way through the universe and it's such a wonderful thing to yeah, know yeah. once you understand the law properly. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. In the case of the human condition, all effects can be traced back to emotions, which are the causes, mm -hmm. within the soul that are eventually thought, expressed or acted upon which are in or out of harmony with love. Correct. So here what we're doing is we're saying, right, all of the negative effects that are caused mm -hmm. are caused and, and that are triggered by human, the human condition, yep. are created by the human soul's disharmony, internal disharmony with love. Mm -hmm. And all of the positive things that are created, that are ever created on the planet and in the spirit world and in any other location in the universe, that are the effect of a human's actions mm -hmm. are all caused by things that are in harmony with love. Yeah. So, so now we have a basic principle by which we can operate the law. Now this law operates day, night, it's, it's, it's never ending and never, never, it, it always has an effect. And, and this law is constantly in operation now. As, so as Janie does point out in her email, yeah. this law, the law of cause and effect is in constant operation every single moment of the universe's existence and mm -hmm. everything in it. And um, the effects, some effects are instantaneous, aren't they? All effects All, are instantaneous. There's an immediate effect, isn't there? There's always an immediate yep. effect. However, with some things, particularly with emotional things, most humans do not recognise the immediate effect. Yes. 
And anything that's invisible to the human eye mm -hmm. is generally also not recognized by the human, mm -hmm. even though there is an effect. So this is the problem that Janie has, is that mm -hmm. she doesn't even see the effect of, it, of her email upon her own soul that Can she sent she? to me. Yeah. Yeah. because she cannot see it and she can't feel it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't believe there to be a negative effect mm -hmm. and I can see it and feel it and therefore know there is one. Yeah. And that's the difference between her and I. Yeah. Once you're sensitive to this law properly from an emotional perspective, you can tell when something is going wrong and you can feel it's going wrong and you know what's gone wrong and you know why. Yes. <laughs> So, and so this gets back to this idea of emotional sensitivity and humility that we talked about in the introduction. Correct. So if a person in their life on earth is sensitive emotionally, they are very in touch with this law of cause and effect because they know when they do something uh, out of harmony with love, they immediately feel it. Mm. And conversely, when they do something loving, they feel, they feel something different. Yes. Now, if Janie actually understood this law, mm -hmm she would never have sent me the email she sent me. Because in sending the email she sent me, there was a negative effect that on her soul, emotionally mm -hmm. and spiritually and in its condition, on her soul by sending me the email. Mm -hmm. Now, if she was sensitive to the operational law and she could actually feel the operation of that law, she would never engage to even sending that particular email to me. Mm -hmm. The fact that she did is proof that she's not sensitive and she does not understand the law. Yes. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And the fact that most people are not sensitive and do not understand the law when they're on earth, many people do enter the spirit world and feel like suddenly there's effects. That they never that felt before. They didn't even think existed before because mm. they were so insensitive. And so many spirits do come back to earth and say, listen, when you pass, that's when you pay the penalties. This uh, is why well, the see, Be careful now. Okay. The law of cause and effect doesn't talk about penalties. Oh. <laughs> the law of um, cause yeah. and effect, there is an effect and a cause, but mm -hmm. there's nothing to do with penalty. Penalty is about the law of compensation. And okay. we need to be very careful that we don't start mixing up the laws. Which is what which Janie is what has Janie done. And yeah. most people on earth actually do. Yes. They miss up, they miss uh, apply confuse, yep. and confuse the laws and even miss... They even combine two laws together thinking they're one law and so forth when they're actually two completely separate laws. Yeah. The law of cause and effect does not is not about the correction of the human soul. No. It just is a statement of what happens and it always is traced back to a, an original source. Yeah. That's all it's about. Yeah. It's not about correcting or redeeming the human soul, whereas the law of compensation is. And so... And this is where we, when we talk about karma, you'll see there's a big difference between the concepts of karma as they're taught on earth and really it's a mixture of different laws yeah. that are misunderstood and misapplied. Mm -hmm. and, the, and because of that, um, most people who teach it, like, like Jane herself has probably done, um, have no understanding of the law itself. Yeah. If, if Janie understood the law of cause and effect, the effect being her soul condition degraded, mm -hmm. Her, and, and she doesn't know, she doesn't even feel that it has. And, and therefore she's not sensitive to it. She didn't observe it occurring. Mm -hmm. And so then she believes it had no effect when it actually had an effect on her. Yeah. It also had an effect on a number of other things. And if I had responded to it differently, mm -hmm. rather, than listen, rather than as we are now, mm -hmm. if I'd gone, yes, Janie, you're correct, man, I then would have engaged her effect yeah. and produce further causes mm -hmm. which would then harm other people further yeah. and have create other effects yeah. and this would this creates the snowball effect yes. if you like <laughs> where where one person engages a falsehood or even a truth yeah. it could be either and the other person does and the other person does and each person influencing the others and before you know it the whole world believes something yes. that might be true or it might be not yeah right and and this is the problem with not understanding this law is that when you engage and you engage a process that's out of harmony with love you do not understand the long term and and far reaching effects of what you caused yes <laughs> yes yeah. all right okay but it is very so different to there's no penalty imposed. No, I I've misspoke by yes, using that word. Yeah. I don't want to. So we need to make sure yep. that it's very clear that the law of cause and effect does not involve penalty. There That's is just right. cause, effect, cause, 
effect. And many times on earth, we do not see that comparison. And sometimes it takes many years in the spirit world before even that basic principle of cause and effect is actually understood yes. at a soul level. To give an example, every person who's ever died of cancer passes into the spirit world believing that there was no real major cause inside of themselves that caused their cancer. Apart from a physiological one, you mean? Apart from yep. a physiological one, apart yep. from a physical one. Yep. After many years of discovery in the spirit world, they eventually find out that actually the cancer was caused by an emotional condition that existed within them, mm -hmm. right? So now they find a direct relationship between the cause, the emotional condition, and its effect, mm -hmm. the cancer existing. Mm -hmm. And then they start to see that actually if they had removed the cause, the emotional condition that creates the cancer, then the effect, the cancer itself, would have disappeared. Mm -hmm. In other words, they would have healed. But they didn't engage that process and as a result died in mm -hmm. their ignorance of the law. Mm -hmm. right? and, it, and it is frequent for humanity to blame external or other events other than what's going on inside of their own soul yeah. on events that have occurred that, that actually have an effect on their own body. Yeah. It's a very frequent thing to do. Constant. And constant. It's and, well it's well accepted. And it demonstrates it. a complete lack of understanding of the law. Yeah. Of cause and effect. Yes. And many people are limiting their understanding of the law of cause and effect to uh, physical causes and physical effects, aren't they? And yes. not seeing the relationship between, between soul, soul, spirit, the real body. cause. And the physical body. Correct. They're not tracing real causes. It's mm -hmm. like I often give the exa example. There was a there was a study done where in the US uh, where they found that that people who eat more ice cream have a higher tendency towards violence. Yeah. Yeah. There's the third thing that usually you eat more ice cream when it's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was not considered. And then there's a fourth thing that was never considered and still isn't considered, and yeah. that is what happens when a person's hot. Yeah. inside of them emotionally, yeah. what actually goes on inside of their body yeah. emotionally. Now, yeah. statistically, I can say there are more people eating ice cream <laughs> or when more people are eating ice cream, there is more violence. Yeah. I can actually say that. Yeah. And the two things are actually true, yeah. but, but they miss out all the underlying causes. It, and if you imply one is, cause, one is, is the a actual cause, cause and the other an effect, Correct. you can miss the whole picture. Correct. And this is exactly yeah. what Janie is doing with yeah. almost all of her life, yes. actually. Yeah. Not understanding what the reason even why she chose the life she currently has yes. was what the cause of that was. And so while she does say, I've always understood that the law of cause and effect, like gravity, was operating all of the time. Which is correct. Which is correct. But not to give us our just desserts in the next life. No, because the which law Which you've of, never said about... No, the law, law of, of, cause, law of and cause and effect has no, if, no penalty-based system associated with it. Yeah. It's just cause and effect. It's got yeah. nothing to do with the concept of... Which, it, which is this new agey sort of concept that karma involves the law of compensation. And there's a different, completely different which law, get which we'll next. get to next. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's, the, there's a huge problem there, I feel. Yes. But she says, um, um, it's not just to give us our just desserts in the next life, although that may happen, but to give us our lessons throughout this life. Yeah, well, there's a lot of problems in her statement. There's no such thing as a next life unless she's talking about life after she's died on earth. She's there's no such thing as a next life, life yeah. on earth. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, she reaches a condition that's way, way more developed than any person who, you know, who on earth has ever reached within a, within a thousand years of passing. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a whole lot, again, there's a whole lot of statements that you can't even read her statements and say this part's true because there's a, there's a heap of assumptions that are false. So Yes. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's very important with this law of cause and effect to understand that it's not, a, it's not about the correction of the human soul. Yeah. So we need to understand that, that God designed a system that affects all matter, not just the human soul, which is matter. But it affects all matter, and and it and it is not penalty based it, or, or rewarding based. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't have either because it's just a law. It's a, it just operates consistently and 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 you know and uh, not uh, not arbitrarily. Uh, it's all it's, of the time, constantly. Yeah. It's it's automatic, and and oftentimes most people on earth don't understand it because we want to attribute 
different effects or different causes to the effect that we are observing. Yeah. Because emotionally we can't cope with the concept mm -hmm. that actually the cause is something else. Yeah. And this particularly applies to human disease and suffering. Yeah. We want to blame something else other than our own condition for any kind of health problem, any kind of accident, any kind of sickness, any kind of whatever. We want to attribute blame to something else other than what actually is the real cause. Yeah. And emotionally, we have a huge desire to avoid actually the real causes. Yeah. But we need to understand. And, and so in summary, this is about not, it's not a penalty based system. It's just you do something, you'll definitely get the effect. You, uh, and, and if you do the same thing as I do, there will be, be the same, same effect, effect. If it's identical. It's got to be identical. It's got to be identical. Which is difficult given that a lot of That we may do things but, differently. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. you, may, you may boil some water but not let it fully boil. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, then there's not going to be much steam. Yeah. Right? But I might let it fully boil and just boil until the kettle's dry. Yeah. yeah. Right? All the water's disappeared. Yeah. And it looks like it's all gone somewhere else. And I then may assume there's a different effect, but but the problem is that we've not done the same thing. Yeah, you've not it, measured the same uh, cause. Correct. The, done taking the same action. Taking the same action, yeah. which has caused the same event. Yeah. That caused the same effect. So when the way God's made it though is that if there is a certain effect, and this applies to health issues as well as it applies to universal issues of what's happening on Earth, what's happening in the spirit world, what happens in the universe, the way it operates, if there is an effect, there's always a cause. Mm -hmm. That's how scientists can see things that can't be seen with the human eyes. That's why they believe in dark matter and they believe in dark flow because they see the effect yes. without observing the cause. The cause is invisible to their eyes, mm -hmm. but the effect is not. Mm -hmm. So therefore they know there must be a cause and that's why they call it, instead of calling it invisible matter or whatever, they call it dark matter, yeah. something they can't see, right? Yeah. And so they're, they're theorizing about a cause in that st in that state. Well, no, they, they know there must effect. be a cause. They just can't see it, so they know there must be one. So they yeah. also know there must be invisible causes to things. Yeah, gotcha. right. And this is a common scientific pr concept now, mm -hmm. where years ago there was no concept. You know, many millennia ago there was no concept that if something couldn't be seen, that it couldn't have an effect. But now we know there's millions of things we can't see that all have an effect on us. And so we are quite uh, willing to observe physically that there must be a cause and effect, but we're not willing to observe spiritually or soul-based causes and effects, unfortunately, yeah. yet very much at all. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So okay. it, it's a beautiful discussion and we can have yes. lots of discussion about the law of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. But what we need to say here, the law of cause and effect and the law, uh, and, the law of, and what they call karma mm -hmm are not the same things. They're completely different, in fact. Well, karma does talk about cause and effect. Right. But actually, karma, the word itself means just action. Yes. Right? And action's got nothing to do with cause and effect aside from sometimes actions cause effects. <laughs> but, but thoughts do too. Yeah. And emotions do too. Yeah. So it's not just actions yeah. that have effects. Yeah. Right. So the implication, the very development of the word began in a time when there wasn't a concept of invisible effects. Right. Right. Every time it was action causes a reaction or action causes an event to occur mm -hmm. and not understanding what the underlying actions were. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then it came was... about and developed further from there. Right. And there was <laughs> some understanding that taking a certain action would influence your future in a certain direction. There was some kind of people starting to draw that. Uh... Yeah, there was a loose concept of that. Um, yeah, okay. And I say loose because, because there's many other laws that affect the outcome of your choices yeah. other than the law of cause and effect. Okay. So, and yeah. this is why we need to discuss the law of compensation, yeah. for example. But yeah. there's other laws too, many other laws. That yeah, yeah. That, it is in that fact. control the outcome. A massive thing to understand the direction and course of our life because there yes. are so many laws operating upon us. Yes. And we're going to do like there? a six day presentation, on what five hours a day, 30 hours in our assistance groups on understanding God's laws. Just on understanding them. Then and, we're doing and, another six And we're six only days. focusing on some basic, some basic laws as yep. they affect the human soul in that discussion. Yes. And then, then we're talking about how to engage those particular laws in another 30 hours. Yeah. And then we've covered what I would classify to be the very basics of what a person needs to know. In order to In order grow. to grow and make some yeah. changes in their life. 
with regard to some of the very basic laws that affect the soul, let yeah. alone <laughs> other <laughs> laws. So, so, you know, obviously what we've discussed here is a very, very short summary of what, what needs to be discussed on the subject. Mm -hmm. Okay, but just to summarise, for every action, word, uh, thought, emotion... And event and uh, and happening happening and on the planet piece of matter in this universe yep affecting any material yep whether it's a human soul spirit body physical body uh, uh, you know an animal a mineral yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 an element uh, anything any shift <laughs> yeah. there will be an immediate and long term effect yes yeah and that is cause and effect yes yeah yes beautiful and it applies whether whether we observe it. Yep. Or we don't, or it's yep. invisible to our eyes. Yep. And it is happening moment by moment by moment by moment by the moment. The whole universe. It's not held off until an afterlife. It's no. not a secret knowledge that someone is guarding. It's happening right now and it's yes. observable if we are sensitive. And, yes, so most people don't observe, particularly the invisible um, yes, and, emotional and emotional side of things and the love-based side of things. Yep. Most people don't observe any of that. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, everything's about love. So... So the reality is, like I said, Janie emails me an email which destroyed her soul condition further mm -hmm. and yet had no awareness of it actually occurring. Whereas if a person was truly observant and they could feel those things, they would know it's occurring while they're doing it. Yeah. And therefore they would probably not probably choose do to do it. Yeah. And the person who is truly aware, that's what they do. They yeah. do not choose to take to, to engage a cause that has an effect that is out of harmony with love because they know there's other laws that affect the outcome then. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we need to discuss one law in particular, the law of compensation. So let's move on to the law of compensation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Each thought, emotion, word or action mm -hmm. taken out of harmony with God's love by a human in any location or condition has an immediate negative consequence upon the soul whether that person is consciously aware of that consequence or not. Yes. You notice in this particular law, we're not talking about material now. We're no. talking specifically about the human soul, not the spirit body, not yeah. the physical body, the human soul. And we're not talking about animals. We're not talking... This is about... This, this is a human soul based law. Yes. This yeah. law only applies, in fact, to human souls. Mm -hmm. It does not apply to animals at all. Yeah. It applies to the highest of God's creation, which is the human soul. Mm -hmm. And it applies... To every human soul consistently. Yeah. Just so, like the cause and just, effect is consistent. Yes. This one is consistent upon human souls. Yes. Yeah. So this particular law obviously does have the concept of sin and penalty. Mm -hmm. And this is very much against New Age belief systems. Most New Age believers do not want to understand the ter term sin. Mm -hmm. They believe it to be a Christian concept or a Muslim concept mm -hmm. and, and they don't think it's a concept that is accurately accurate scientifically mm -hmm. but i have observed this over 2000 years every single moment of my existence and it is definitely a true scientific based law that we need to come to understand yes. and and understand how it operates and again any person who is emotionally sensitive can feel the workings of these this law yes but uh, again it, it requires emotional sensitivity yeah. and and an observation of the invisible yeah. The, the reality is <clears throat> when we take an action that is a sin, yeah. there is an immediate darkening of our body, our, our, our soul darkens, and as a result, the spirit body darkens, and it has an immediate physical effect on our spirit, physical body, actually, mm -hmm. most of the w which we cannot observe immediately mm -hmm. because we, we don't see the invisible or, mm -hmm. the, or the minute, mm -hmm. and as a result, we don't think anything has actually occurred when it has. Yeah. And this is exactly what Janie's done sending me her email. Yeah. Right. So another law that she's actually engaged with negatively. Without so. understanding. Yeah. So this is an indication she does not understand this law either. No. So otherwise she would never. And in fact, this law had far more serious consequences upon her soul mm -hmm. than, than not understanding the law of cause and effect. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. And, and this is what we need to understand about this law because this law does only apply to the human soul. It does have serious consequences on the human soul. Yeah. And as, as such, we need to understand it if we're ever going to be happy and truly satisfied. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's, let's understand a let's little understand bit of it. Let's understand it a bit. <laughs> so <clears throat> the law of compensation demands. Can I point out before you say any more? Yeah. We did talk about 
questions last week or the week before. Uh, no, it might be longer than that now. I think it was, I think it was in the tenth or eleventh or twelfth of December. Yeah. Um, we did a series on of uh, of feedbacks yeah. on uh, when I think it was Sandra. Sandra asked us about the law of compensation yeah. and so forth. Okay. So, so my suggestion is for people, you know, obviously if they mm-hmm. want to learn more about the law of compensation, that's a great place to also go to to that yes. resource. Yes, a personal of, feedback session. As which a, in the title there's reference to the law of compensation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So my suggestion is have a look at that as well if you haven't yeah. already done so. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But to summarise, mm-hmm. the law of compensation demands. Demands, demands. is a key word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of God's laws. Yeah. There's no wiggle room. There's no wiggle room. <laughs> <laughs> that each unloving emotion or desire that triggered the thought, word or action out of harmony with love will need to be removed from the soul since the unloving emotion or desire is the underlying cause of the thought, word or action. Yes. So what part, part of this compensation process is, is that you have to at some point recognise that there's a reason why you chose to take an action that was out of harmony with love. Mm-hmm. And that reason is, is it a desire or emotion that exists within the soul, that it was also out of harmony with love. And, and that particular emotional desire will need to be removed in order for the effect of the, or the penalty to no longer apply. Yeah. So in other words, if you so, no longer want to exist by the penalty, you must remove its cause. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. So in the first part of the, the explanation of the law of compensation, we said for every unloving action thought word that you, that you take, there is an immediate negative consequence. On yourself and others. Uh, yes whether you're aware of it or not. Mm. Um, and, and this further explanation is saying that if you want to remove that compensatory effect, you must remove the cause, which then relates to the law we've spoke about previously. Correct. So the law of compensation involves the law of cause and effect mm-hmm. by stating that, the, and this is why people in New Age movements get mixed up, because the reality is the law of compensation, which only applies to the soul, yeah. does involve some principles from the law of cause and effect. Yeah. But, but it is not the law of cause and effect. No. Right. <laughs> because it's, it's actually the application or the working of these negative consequences, isn't it? Correct. Yep. Yes. Okay. And what God's trying to do to redeem the soul. So this is the law of compensation is all about the redemption of humanity from sin. Yeah. God created a law. Isn't this wonderful? God mm-hmm. created the law before we even existed that allowed for our own redemption. Should we choose to do something wrong? That, that indicates that God knew in advance mm-hmm. that actually we would, may choose to do something wrong because we got, gave, got given free will. We had the potentiality to go yeah. loving, and, unloving, loving, that, unloving, so that, every that moment. In its, the existence yeah. of this law is proof that God knew in advance that there was the potential for humans to choose something that was unloving. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he gave us a way to be redeemed from the unloving choice. Yeah. Those negative consequences are actually a feedback mechanism. Correct. It's like, yeah, mm. it's like the like I don't want to confuse the law of cause and effect. <laughs> no, but, no, I okay, guess. But it's, isn't it wonderful that God? It's an effect that is very personal and immediate. And, but isn't it wonderful that God even provided a yeah. law which allowed for the human to undo its own damage to itself to grow in, in awareness. advance of the creation of the human itself? Exactly. For, for, the, for the human to go from a state of being really detuned and detached to grow awareness and to correct their sin. Yes. Um, to me, it's, it's infinitely loving. Yes. Yeah, yeah very loving provision. Yeah. So the law of compensation is a very loving law, and that's why spirits who know about the law properly call it the, the law of natural love, uh, mm-hmm. one of the laws of natural love. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so can we just define what sin is? Because we're about to talk even more about sure. sin which is missing the mark of love, of God's love from God's perspective. Yeah, missing the mark of God's love. Yeah. So unless we perfectly engage uh, things as God would engage them, we have sinned. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so the law of comp- compensation demands that the sin of the person mm-hmm. must be awakened to, yes. acknowledged, yes. felt and experienced as pain and suffering. Yes. And that is in order for the compensation to be removed. 
Yes, that's the operation of this law. So it requires a awakening process, which involves not only the awakening, but also the desire eventually to feel the actual effects of the created sin which yeah. you caused. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the sin itself, I suppose you could say, is the effect mm -hmm. of a cause which exists within oneself. Yeah. A cause which does not have to involve sin, in fact. Mm -hmm. It can involve just a desire yeah. that gave birth to sin. Yeah. And that's why there is the Bible text that talks about desires giving birth to sin yeah. rather than sinful desires giving birth to sin. Yeah. The reality is a perfect person can sin mm -hmm. because a perfect person in a moment can choose to do something out of harmony with love. Obviously, a perfect person would uh, probably not choose that very frequently, if yeah. at all, because <laughs> yeah. they already have learnt the particular causes. But, mm -hmm. but a perfect person, such as a person born on earth, if they were born to parents without sin, could then afterwards choose to sin mm -hmm. because they have not yet learned or not let, uh, yet acknowledged the effect of the law of conversation on their own soul. Yeah, and also um, a perfect, <coughs> even a perfect person born to parents without sin still has their own will, yes. which they have not yet fully understood. Or developed. Or developed, because yep. a person born perfectly does, is still r arrives with that, an undeveloped awareness of their own will. Yes, they know neither right nor wrong. That's right. And so while the likelihood for them to choose wrong is, is diminished... Less. They still can do that, and because they 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 are not fully self aware in that state, so they're going to have to learn lessons. Correct. Yeah. And the God created the entire existence, even if we're perfect, to be the continuation of the learning of lessons. Yes. So so don't believe that just because you don't know everything that you're not perfect. Mm -hmm. From God's perspective, perspective, perfection is all about perfection in love, yeah. doing everything in harmony with the way God would do it, mm -hmm. doing everything in harmony with God's love. Mm -hmm. It's not about knowledge. Mm -mm. It's about love. Yeah. So, And this is where Janie's making some big mistakes in her life. She thinks that the gaining of knowledge without the love in her heart development or soul, of love, development yeah. of love in yeah. her heart soul, is going to positively benefit her. This is not the case. Mm -hmm. The gaining of knowledge is only going to benefit you if the knowledge is in harmony with love. And if it leads you to develop in love. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, beautiful. All right, so getting back to the law of compensation specifically, it demands that the effects of all unloving actions, mm -hmm. whether taken in ignorance or purposefully, mm -hmm. must be paid for by the person taking the action. Yes. And that's paid for through a penalty, isn't it? Through this negative consequence that through comes. Through the pain and suffering. Yeah. So you experience pain and suffering until the cause is released. Mm -hmm. And often this involves, for most people, this involves feeling a little bit of pain and suffering here and a little bit there and a little bit here and a little bit there over a period of hundreds, sometimes thousands of years. And eventually all the pain and suffering from that particular thing has been released. And also they've addressed the underlying reason why they took the particular action mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that pain and suffering why they took that underlying action is released. Mm -hmm. And as a result of the release of that, they are eventually cleared of the sin and they are considered to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So that's a slow way of forgiveness. That's, and that's the law of compensation in operation. That's the law of compensation in operation. It's inexorable. In other words, it will keep grinding away and grinding away until the cause of the sin has been removed. Mm -hmm. And it will continue to do so for the rest of your existence until the cause of the sin is removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the law also demands that the condition of the person and therefore their location in the spirit world. So by condition, we mean the condition of love within that person. The soul condition of the person, yep. which is defined as everything about the person. There's their emotions, their experiences, their their condition in love, but also their condition with other qualities, humility, mm -hmm. faith and other qualities, mm -hmm. the sum total of their condition. Yep. Dictates that they will not be able to move from their current location in love without paying the penalty for their unloving behaviour. Correct. So there's this common concept on earth that you can just say sorry and everything's forgiven, and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. The reality is you have to pay the penalty somehow, mm -hmm. right? This is how the law works. Obviously, there's higher laws that can circumvent this law, but most people don't engage the higher laws. So they are engaging these laws every single moment of their life. 
And this is why people die from old age, because mm-hmm. uh, the body itself is is decaying because of the law being engaged. Yeah, the it's compensatory the, the compensatory effects, effects of unloving behaviour. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what I've noticed is that if I deal with some unloving things that are inside of my soul, grey hairs that appear appeared before then disappear. Yeah. And and if I deal with another thing, you know, the problem that I had disappears. Mm-hmm. So so the reality is that if you address things, then there's no need for you know the physical. Uh, degradation of your own body even to occur yeah, yeah. and the fact is if if Janie's own body is physically degrading through her age then it's proof that she doesn't understand the law either mm-hmm. uh, like and and the reality is very few if any people on the planet really at this moment understand the law properly because if you did you wouldn't you, you know obviously you'd be in a state where nothing goes wrong with your body yeah. and, and I'm not in that situation and and I'm not aware of anyone else on the planet who is yeah um, I was like in that situation in the first century. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we've mentioned that the only way um, that a person is only by engaging a higher law, such as forgiveness and repentance, that we can overcome the effects of the law of compensation if we have indeed taken an action that's out of harmony with love. Correct. Of course, we don't engage with the law if we don't take any actions that are out of harm. Correct. If, if, we've, if we're perfect, the law of compensation is like it doesn't exist almost. Yeah. Because it's still there or still operates for everyone else. But because we're not engaging any unloving behaviour, there is no need for the law to have its redemptive effect. Mm-hmm. So therefore mm-hmm. the law does not even engage with our soul under those circumstances. Yep. There's also yep. another circumstance where the law doesn't engage in our soul and that's if we use a higher law. And the law of forgiveness and repentance is the higher law. Yeah. And but that requires an awakening to the sin, a desire to feel the sin. It has the same requirements as the law of compensation, with one exception, and that is a a desire to be sorry for the sin directed towards God, yeah. which results in God's love entering the soul and the forgiveness process taking rap- place rapidly, rather than over a slowly grinding and very difficult process instead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a few more points about Mm -hmm. uh, this law of compensation and then I think we should summarise it a little bit because we've said a lot of stuff in there. Sure, but uh, we've got to be careful about our summary taking as long as the presentation. (laughs) (laughs) But that's probably my problem. Yeah, I think (laughs) I often try and just hit the main points and you say (laughs) you expand again. I always remember things that I've forgotten before. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Okay. We've mentioned that the law of compensation doesn't apply to animals, minerals, you know, other elements within no. the universe. Um, it's only about the human soul and humans. Mm-hmm. Um, however, humans do have to pay the penalty for negative and unloving actions that they have taken towards animals and towards um, other elements of the universe. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So. Because obviously the definition of the law of compensation is any action uh, any thought, uh, motion, word or action taken out of harmony with love mm-hmm. towards anything. Mm-hmm. It's not just towards other humans. Yeah. Although the ones, the the compensatory effects towards other humans are much greater than the compensatory effects required towards other things. Yeah. Um, the reality is it does apply to all things, how we as humans affect all things mm-hmm. and how we choose unloving behaviour with all things. Mm-hmm. So it affects whether you, you know, it, this is the law that applies from eating meat and it's a law yep. that applies you know with regard to damaging the environment purposefully in yep. particular and, and even accidentally yeah and um, it's a laws that applies to using chemicals that you know to be harmful and mm-hmm. there's all there's a whole heap of you know there's a look, cause and effect of that but there's also a compensatory yep. effect on your soul as well about that yeah yeah so so much of the law of compensation. So, so for example, there's things that you, actions that you can take, and maybe we need to give you some examples. There's the actions you can take which involve both the law of cause and effect and the law of compensation. So, if, to give an example, if if I accidentally fall off of a building, yeah. right, then the law of cause and effect has operated. Mm-hmm. Right. So, let's say I, I fell from a twenty-story building. The law of cause and effect has operated. I fell. Mm-hmm. And and took a mistake in action, obviously a mistake yep. of some kind. Obviously, that had its own cause inside of us that causes to get close to the edge enough to fall <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah. But I fell, yeah. and as a result of falling, 
um, I dive. Mm -hmm. And and there's the effect of that. And that's the end of that law yeah. and its operation. So the law of gravity is operating under the law of cause and effect. Yeah. If I jumped, mm -hmm. now there are compensatory effects, yeah. which, which are much, much greater as a penalty upon our soul than the actual effect of the law of cause and effect is. Mm -hmm. So, so the, I still died, yeah. but now I've died with also a very dark soul condition Yeah. as a result of the choices that I made. Because there's a cause a, a, a that cause caused me to jump. That led to the unloving action, and Correct. it's the unloving action that incurs the penalty, the Correct. law of compensation. So while the cause of jumping has the same effect of death, the law of compensation now acting upon that unloving intention and action to jump doesn't have the same effect. It has a it has a completely different effect. A different effect. A much more powerful effect on yourself. It's actually more painful than death. Yes. It is more painful than, than death. physical death. Yeah. Once you go through the emotion, you'll yeah. realise that it's more painful than dying. Yeah. Much more painful, in fact. Yeah. Um, and in fact, extremely much more painful. <laughs> yeah. now, now, the same applies if I was pushed, mm. but not to my soul, mm -hmm. but to rather the soul of the person who pushed me. Yeah. So the, the, um, the cause of falling over the cliff is someone pushing. Yep. The effect is my physical death. And that's the only thing I have to pay for in that moment. Yeah. The law of compensation, however, is acting upon the person with the unloving thought, emotion and action to actually push me. So all the people that were harmed by that action, all yeah. the people that were harmed by my dying, all yeah. the people who might be that I was the breadwinner of the family and all of the family are all traumatised by that. Yeah. And all these other things that occur that are the effects of that particular cause mm -hmm. all will be attributed to the pusher, to the, to the, pusher, the yeah. person who pushed me. And that, and that will have a penalty on their soul, which they will experience as pain and suffering. And this is something, isn't it, even for people who are a little bit versed in what we teach about the law of compensation. Many times we're not seeing the full scope. Huge scope, of, huge effects. Of the, the, the effects of actions taken, our unloving uh, actions. Yes, because we, we don't see the law of cause and effect which would say, well, you know, I pushed the person and he died. Mm. That's it, right? But that's not actually the full operation of the law of cause and effect because, because now I've also got the law of compensation to consider. Yeah. It's not the full action of God's laws on you. No, sorry, yeah, it's not the full action of God's laws. I've got the law of compensation to consider. Yeah. And the law of compensation, the effect is much worse yeah. than if I just engage the law of cause and effect. Yeah. Right? Because it is, as you said, it's not just about ending the life of that person. It's even about the people who are involved in that person's life. <coughs> there might be new legislation that affects that cliff. Mm -hmm. There might be all kinds of, <coughs> sorry, all kinds of things that um, happen as a result of that one action that will then that are unloving that will be attributed to the person. Yes, you imagine a person just signing a document that says "Go to war." Mm. Millions of people affected, yeah. millions of lives destroyed, millions of persons harmed, has a big effect on their soul. Yeah. Um, even if they think they had a good reason for doing it, mm -hmm. and and this is where you know people. I, I feel people who are in Eastern philosophies and religions have no understanding of the law of compensation at all. Mm. If they did. They would never engage a class system. You've got to remember that the Eastern, these Eastern philosophies originated in many locations around the earth that do have castes or class systems. Yeah. And uh, and and these particular particular class systems, in fact, have a detrimental effect to the souls of the people who promote them. Mm. So you're talking about their Hinduism and things like that. Well, yeah, because... the concept, for example, that you know there are people who are lesser because they've re you know reincarnated in a position that's mm -hmm. lesser, mm -hmm. is is in itself going to encourage law of compensation issues because even of, that viewpoint is incurred. Even just the thought, yeah, the desire for that to be true, yeah, is going to have its own effects yeah. on the law as the law of compensation occurs. Yeah. So. What I feel a lot of people in Eastern philosophy don't understand is the, is while they may get a little bit of the law of cause and effect, which I can't agree with, because mm -hmm. if they did, they'd understand it's far right, far higher, more reaching yeah. um, tentacles than what they believe them to have. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
when it comes to the law of conversation, it's like they don't understand it at all. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. if yeah. they did, they'd never be able to engage the society that that they live in in the way they do. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a yeah. it's a. Or even I suppose there you're also referring to. Um, there's a lot of fragments of the so these kind of philosophies that in many people in the West are now kind of engaged in, which are pseudo uh, like. Um, Pseudo Eastern philosophies, <laughs> yeah, or they they've been influenced by some of those yes. those philosophies, and there's a lot of rationalisation of pain and suffering through sort of things that have their ideas that have their origins in in what you're referring to here of the very unloving way that classes and societies have been structured yeah. uh, with certain ideas about people, and many people in the West who I've seen have taken on these things have no concept really they're not even sensitive to the fact that a lot of what they're saying is quite related to these things that they might even call very unloving but the same kind of thought rationalization is happening within their approaches yeah which shows as you said that they're completely detuned to the law of compensation yeah they don't understand at the soul level the operation of the law Mm -hmm. if they did they'd never engage many of the behaviors they're engaging and this applies to Janie in her email to me. Yeah. If she understood the detrimental effects of her email upon her own soul, mm-hmm. she would, and the detrimental effects of many of her beliefs, which are encouraged in her email, the belief, for example, that she is superior to others, the belief that people should listen to her because she knows things they don't know, mm-hmm. the belief that what she knows is better than what other people know, and so forth, uh, without there being any proof to such things, yep. um, is, a, is an indication that she does not understand the law of conversation. The, the fact that she continues to be the director of a, of a yoga institute, which is led by spirits who are not in good condition, mm-hmm. is an indication in itself that she does not actually understand the law of compensation because she's going to pay a, a part in the detrimental effects of that particular organisation. Yes. <laughs> and in fact, her soul is already paying penalty of for these sins. Of course it is. It yeah. automatically is. She's just not sensitive to it. She's not even sensitive to it. She hasn't even. She doesn't even believe it to it. be yeah. a, a sin. She's not awakened to the condition yet, and 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 many in her position never awaken for many years to come, even after they've passed. And so they pass into the spirit world. They're still engaging with the penalties of the law of compensation for many many years. Not understanding why. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, of course there is, as you briefly mentioned, these higher laws, the law of repentance and forgiveness Yes, that can be engaged. However, um, those higher laws demand that there is an awakening to, an acknowledgement of, a de- and, a, and a desire to feel the pain and suffering. So all of the things that the law of compensation demands. demands. Um, in addition to. Yes, yes. Um <laughs> In addition to actually engaging with God and asking for God's forgiveness yes. sincerely. From the heart. From the heart. Yes. So there's a there's a huge awakening to sin. There's a full willingness to pay the penalty. Yes. Um, and, and a willingness to, a desire to understand the full scope of all of the penalty, all of the negative um, effects yes. of, of the unloving action. And this is going to be very difficult for Janie. Yeah. Because she, she can't even see the sin in the first place. Yeah let alone yeah. engage a law that tells her that she has to be sincere about it. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So it's going to, So she, unfortunately, while she stays in the current condition, having a lack of awareness of the mm-hmm. sin mm-hmm. and a lack of awareness of the law and how mm-hmm. it operates, she will unfortunately engage the consequences of that law rather than engaging a higher law. Yeah. And, and as a result of that, uh, has very little... Uh, opportunity to receive God's love while she remains in that condition. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, so just to just to briefly summarise. So there's the law of compensation. That's the law of compensation. Basically, uh, we're going beyond cause and effect here, and we're yep. saying that if there is a thought, word, action, uh, deed, emotion within us that is unloving from God's viewpoint of love, so yes. God's definition of love, not our own, not our own. Any of those things is incurring a penalty. Yes. Immediately, whether we know it or not. Yes. Whether we're conscious of the fact that we are sinning or not. Yes. Um, 
And Obviously, there's a difference between purposeful sins and non-purposeful. The purposeful ones incur even greater penalty. That's right. But even the ones that where we're ignorant of our unloving state, there is still still a penalty, which is an extension of God's love to help us understand Correct. the difference between what is loving it's and unloving. It's like when a child falls over walking, it, it feels the penalty of something it didn't choose to do. Yeah. It chose to walk or try yeah. to. But falling over it didn't choose to do probably. It was a mistake in action, but there's still a penalty. So that way they get to feel what the results of falling over are. Yeah, yeah. And the benefits of walking. And the benefits of not falling over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and in order and this this law demands that we un that we come to know what is loving and what is not. Yes. Um, and that we pay the penalty in pain and suffering for the unloving condition of our soul. Yes. It's about the redemption. It's about yep. redemption, getting ourselves back into a condition where we act perfectly. Yep. So God's intention was that all humankind act perfectly. Yep. So, so this whole concept that it's a part of the human condition to be imperfect is not true at all. It's mm -hmm. a complete falsehood mm -hmm. invented by people who desire Watch. you to remain imperfect. <laughs> or, or want to ex excuse badness. <laughs> or want badness. to excuse their own imperfection. Yeah. Yeah. The reality is God desires your perfection. God created you to be perfect. And God even created a whole series of laws that enable you to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this law, the law of compensation, basically demands that we will be responsible for ourselves, yes. for our unloving uh, state, whether we are aware that it's unloving or not, yes. we are responsible. <clears throat> yes. Full stop. It makes us responsible beings. Yeah. It, it's a direct result, in fact, of the gift of free will, yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. it and it's so, such a lovely thing that we got mm -hmm. the gift of free will, but along with the gift of free will come certain responsibilities, and one of those responsibilities is governed by the law of compensation. Yeah. I know that there's been times as I've been coming to terms with these truths emotionally yeah. where I've thought, you know, God, that gift of free will, you can have Didn't that have back because <laughs> this <laughs> compensatory <laughs> stuff really hurts. Yeah. And actually, I, I, my will really, you know, it, it feels challenging. There's pain and suffering. But even that demonstrates, doesn't it, a lack of understanding of that law. It does. Like and the love involved with the law. Yes, and I don't feel that way anymore. No, but, no, yeah. it, but you have to work through that emotionally, even yeah. that thought. Yeah. And the feeling comes from an emotion that has its cause. Yeah. And, and once you work through those emotions, then you no longer feel those things. Yeah. You, you understand the love that's involved with these laws. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's the law of compensation, and you can see the difference between the law of compensation and the law of cause, cause and, and effect. effect. Very, yeah. very different laws. And even have they, they have a different scope. Yeah. And a different purpose of operation. And in fact, the law of compensation is acting upon... Just human, just the human soul. Cause yeah. and effects operating everywhere at all times all time. on everything. On everything. Yeah. Yep. There's a correlation because the law of compensation demands that we deal with the causes of yes. our sin. Yes. And not don't just run around trying to cover up the effects because yes. while we do that, we're still going to incur penalties. Yes. Yeah. But we must also state at this point mm -hmm. that it's important to see that that um, each law. And, and its operation has an independent operation. Mm -hmm. It's very important also to acknowledge the importance of each law in, 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 its, in its process, like in terms of its necessity. Yeah. In terms of its, uh, like each its law. Its purpose and its has a purpose its and value. A, yes, and, yep. a, and a value. And, and we also can see that if we truly understood each law, we would be living in harmony with the law, in obedience to the law. Yeah. And, uh, and obviously the fact that the human race is not is a lot of pain and suffering is a good indication that we're not living in the obedience to the law. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We probably also need to point out that, uh, um, oh, I just skipped my mind, unfortunately. So let's now talk about karma as it's sort of taught and understood on earth at yeah. the moment. Yeah. So karma means action, work, or deed. That's it. The word, that's what it means. Yeah. It also refers to the spiritual principle of cause and effect, where intent and actions of an individual cause influence the future of that individual effect. Yes. And, and even that understanding is not the true understanding of cause and effect, <laughs> as we've discussed. Yes, because it's actually broader than that, isn't it? Much broader. And also, and also, the fact is that most people take an action 
right, or even speak a word because there are other causes. That there's already causes that they've ignored yeah. that trigger the thought even, yeah. that then trigger the action or trigger the word or trigger, you know, the, mm -hmm. the choice that they're making. And so, and then of course, when they make that choice or that, that decision and take that action, it has further effects, further consequences. And, and what I feel is it's not encompassing enough mm -hmm. uh, in the concept of, you know, the, in the spiritual new age concepts, because they don't understand the true causes of things. And in fact, I've had many thousands and thousands of conversations with particularly spirits when I was a spirit about the law of cause and effect. And, and most of them have not understood the very basic reasons why they chose to do certain things from an emotional perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's a very, like, I feel, I feel while they sprout the concept, yeah. there is very little understanding even of the law of cause and effect itself. So, but basically you're saying that karma as it's commonly referred to on earth today, <coughs> mm -hmm people are really relating that to the law of cause and effect but in a very narrow viewpoint of the actual law that we've just spoken about yeah firstly they often relate to it negatively mostly so in other words you did a bad thing and you're going to get your just desserts down the track mm -hmm. you know and that's more expressing their wish to punish the person than anything else <laughs> yeah and isn't that also more wishing to imply that the person's going to have a penalty which is actually more like the law of compensation correct that's the yeah. thing i'm getting at is that it's like they're really trying to attribute the law of compensation to the to to the law of cause and effect yeah and uh, and they're two completely separate laws yeah. the law of cause and effect operates upon all material the law of compensation only operates upon the human soul. So a completely different law yeah. and completely different reasons for operating too. Yeah. Um, law of cause and effect is operational all the time. So it has positive as well as negative connotations yeah. where law of, law of compensation Com only operates when the soul is in disharmony with love. So, you know, completely different causes of operation as well. So I feel this is a great deal of confusion in the new age community and in Eastern philosophy about how and when these particular laws operate and why they operate. Yeah. There is also the concept, and we'll talk about some of these concepts um, that have arisen that, that are about the delay of, <laughs> you know, you'll get your just desert sometime in the future type yeah. of thing. Well, the law of cause and effect and the law of conversation are immediate. All mm -hmm. of them, all the laws are immediate. It's just whether you're sensitive to the immediate results or not. Mm -hmm. and, and the majority of humankind are not sensitive. And that's why they can do something unloving and think they've got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> when they actually haven't. Yes. And, and of and course. Can, oh, that's the thing I wanted to say earlier too. And as a result of that, these laws that are operational cause and effect and the conversation, it's often only when we pass that we actually understand the we start to feel the effects of such laws because before then we were insensitive to the law and it's only after we pass and this is why many spirits and many people who transmit information to earth mm -hmm. believe that the hells of the spirit world are the compensation mm -hmm. but the hells of the spirit world are only the location where the people who are desensitized to their own process sin. of compensation to their own sin have to live while they are in the state in yeah. the spirit world where they do not acknowledge their sin yeah right so so the, the, the hells are not specifically created to cause the compensation to occur or to to have the compensation enacted now mm -hmm. because the compensation is enacted the moment you engage the sin yeah but you are often not consciously aware of such fact Mm -hmm. And so it's only after you've entered, and in, and in Janie's case, it's only after she enters the spirit world, enters a place that's not as good as she expected, mm -hmm. that she may consider that actually many of the actions she took that she thought were good might have been bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that make sense? It total sense. And, and this is why I often talk about the fact that only or usually after you pass do you recognize certain things and not before then. Yes. Because before then, it, what is should be easily felt is invisible to your soul and your eyes because you're desensitized to your emotion. Mm -hmm. But after you passed, the desensitivity to your location 
is much more difficult to embrace because your soul will attract you to the location That's right. because you, of the condition of love. You can't deny where you are as easily. Yes. Yeah. So a person here on earth can live in a mansion mm -hmm. and be in a terrible, terrible condition. Mm -hmm. But in the spirit world, they can't live in a mansion and be in a terrible condition. Yeah. And they'll realize that they're no longer in a mansion and therefore must be, you know, there must be a reason why they're now no longer in a mansion. And this is the problem on earth is we can fool ourselves as to our condition, which is exactly what Janie is doing. She is. She's and fooling herself to her, as to her own condition. Yes. And you've also highlighted something from her email um, where she's sort of making the inference that I think she's implying that you are saying that karma was was only about payback in the next life, which then she's saying that that's no different to Christianity or Muslim and perhaps Jewish faiths where good deeds are rewarded and bad deeds punished in the next life, when in fact that's nothing like what you're saying. No, the, you <clears throat> immediately feel the penalty of a punishment. Yeah. However, most people on earth are not sensitive yeah. to the penalty immediately or and cannot see their own physical body and therefore yeah. cannot see the effect of their injury. Can't see their spiritual they, body. Yeah. Well, they can't even see their physical body. They yeah. can't see what's going on <laughs> yeah. inside of their physical yeah. body to know that a certain problem has been caused by an action taken out of harmony with love. Yeah. And, and they can't see their you know, effects on their other bodies either. Mm -hmm. But and they can still live in their pretty house in a pretty street, on a pretty suburb of whatever, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, but when they pass in the spirit world, none of those things will be possible. Mm -hmm. And that's why many of them see the spirit world as the law, the, the land of compensation mm -hmm. rather than the earth as the land of compensation. Mm -hmm. right? So it's a very important distinction yeah. that the law operates all the time, but the majority of people do not see it operational. Mm -hmm. until they get into the land of compensation, <laughs> usually the, the hells of the spirit world, or it could be some of the earlier heavens of the spirit world if they've done good deeds, yeah, right? yeah. if they've actually done things that haven't been, that have been loving yeah. and haven't been harmful, they'll enter you know, maybe the second sphere, which is mar far exceeds it, the beauty of any place on earth. Mm -hmm. And that's where they'll enter. But uh, they're, not, they're not going to be able to fool themselves about one or the other condition. Yeah as they can on earth yeah. yeah yeah so very important to understand that principle yeah. and this is where i feel there's a huge problem with janie's understanding yeah is that she believes just because her life now see if seemingly feels good to her and she's in a good position and people respect her and people honor her and people do what she demands and even expects jesus to do what she demands and mm -hmm. um, that that means that you know she's got a good life and when the reality is the soul condition has actually been terribly affected by her demands without her knowledge. Yeah. And it's been without her knowledge because of her choice to not acknowledge mm -hmm. for no other reason. Yeah. 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 Okay. Excellent. So these teachings of karma mm -hmm. have a major influence on the teaching of, of reincarnation. They do. Yeah. Which, um, as taught on Earth today, are completely yeah. false. Not the only influence, though, on the teaching of reincarnation. There are many emotional reasons why a person desires to believe in reincarnation, just as there are many emotional reasons that are all out of harmony with love, by the way, that a person would want to believe in many of the Christian doctrines and teachings. Mm -hmm. Not all of which are false, mm -hmm. but many of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, well, let's talk about why the teachings of karma, this rudimentary idea of cause and effect, mm -hmm. um, uh, why that's actually flawed from God's perspective. Mm. So the first way, which you have mentioned really, but the law of cause and effect is not the only law that influences the future of individuals. Correct. In fact, it's one of the many laws that influence the future of individuals. Yes. And in fact... When it comes to your real future, your your future after you've passed from this earth, because most people live what seventy to hundred years on earth at the most, mm -hmm. and so it's a very small part of their total lifespan, they'll find that the majority of their life of their next life, mm -hmm. but it's not a life a reincarnated next life. It's actually a life in the spirit world. The majority of their next life will be severely affected by laws other than the law of cause and effect. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to understand 
the operation of some of those laws, law of compensation being a primary one. Yeah, and there's other laws, isn't there? So there's the law of compensation, which you've discussed in talks. There's the law of attraction, which you've discussed in talks. Yes. Law of forgiveness and repentance. Which are even more important to understand. Yep. Um, law of desire. Yep. Very important to understand. Yep. yep. And how, the, how all of these laws will impact upon your future life to a great degree, far, and, and law of cause and effect, while it's such a lovely law, mm -hmm. and while it's a law that affects all material, it is not the only law that does so. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So it's quite limited just to look at karma. It's quite limited, but and I'm not suggesting that uh, people who believe in laws are just looking at the law of karma. No. What I'm, suggest uh, the, um, what I'm suggesting is there is a deep misunderstanding of such laws, and a deep misunderstanding of the results of such laws. So, even, so, so as I've pointed out in Janie's case, she d obviously does not understand the law of cause and effect itself, mm -hmm. otherwise she would never have sent the email. Even just understanding that law, she would never accept it, sent the email because she would have seen the effect that it had on her spirit body at the time and it noticed the darkening of her own condition in sending it and in the process of sending it would have, you know, decide to maybe send a different email. Yep. You know, one that's more sincerely questioning rather yeah. than... Then. Quite, quite derogatory towards myself. Yeah. Um, as as the email actually was, and and also quite um, you know strongly uh, resistive to to truth. Um, she wouldn't have sent that. Mm -hmm. um, but if she understood the law of compensation, she definitely wouldn't have sent it. No. Right. And if she understood the law of compensation, she probably wouldn't even be in the positions she has now, or any of the other things that she's currently doing. Yeah. If she understood that law. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, to assume that you understand all of those laws and to assume that everything's going to be fine in your future um, as a result of your perfect understanding of the law is in itself not understanding karma itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. I find most people who talk about the principle of karma don't understand it anyway. Mm. This is why I don't like using the term frequently because... It, it's a very new age philosophy that that does not incorporate the majority of other laws that affect the future of the human soul. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay then. <coughs> well, karma. Let's look at how karma is in is applied to these reincarnation theories that yes. exist. Yes, let's Earth. do that. Yeah. So that's also done for quite flawed reasons, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, so here we're talking about the need. Yep. The whole reincarnation idea or concept. Originally, it began in much simpler terms. You know, it was just, you know, somebody died and they, they, people noticed the time of death. You, you, there is a feeling at the time of death, if you're sensitive, where you can feel the soul, if you like, of the individual leaving them. Mm -hmm. And then quite frequently, particularly back then, that particular person would immediately overcloak someone in the next generation. Yeah. Immediately. They'd go from their own body straight to overcloaking or possessing yeah. another person who's been born or child, yeah. right? And frequently that person would begin to demonstrate the characteristics of the prior person. Yeah. So then people started thinking reincarnation, you know, we, we, the breath goes out and the breath goes in to another being. And, yeah. and that's rudimentary yeah. concept, that's how it began. And then it developed from there to okay. incorporate many other things like having a, the whole concept of having some kind of life regurgitation review your review yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in the spirit world in a conscious state and then mm -hmm. coming back in an unconscious state that got introduced afterwards you know yeah. th those kind of concepts which are all unloving concepts of course and therefore untrue mm -hmm. um, they got all introduced because their people could tell that there were certain spirits that stayed in the spirit world for a period of time why didn't they come back straight away yeah and there had to be an explanation for that yeah <laughs> Does that yeah. make sense? So they had yeah. to come up with an explanation for that, which is also not true, but, but yeah, yeah. the explanation is not true, but, but they come up with an explanation to explain it, yeah. which is another philosophy created to explain an occurrence that has no relationship to the true cause of that yeah. occurrence. They, they apply an, a cause which is Which is, is imaginings of a human true. mind. Yeah. It's not, nothing to do with actual reality. Yes. The reason yes. why these spirits stay and can't come back is because they physically can't come back. Yeah. <laughs> and they would never be able to come back unless they get into a particular condition. Yeah. And the reality is once they get into a higher condition, they don't choose to come back yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Hey. Okay. Um, but 
because most people on earth don't seem to, we've talked about how if you're sensitive, you can feel this and see this, but most people wandering around, looking at people doing bad deeds, they thinking they don't seem to be reaping any negative not straight away consequences what's going on mm. um you know and why is it that some people get away with doing bad things and then some people seem to have like a terrible terrible life and why is it the opposite occurs as yeah. we point out yeah you know why is it that some people do really nice things and they seem to be punished for it mm-hmm. why does that happen yeah <laughs> and because people um can't explain that yes. they then they then go oh a way to explain this away yes. is to say, well, it's all about karma. Yeah. In a past life, the reason why that nice person is getting treated badly now mm-hmm. is because in the past life they were bad, so they deserve to get treated badly now. Yeah, yeah. Or the reason why that, that bad person is getting treated nicely now is either one, in their past life they were nice, and or, yeah. but that's probably not a possibility anymore in most reincarnation theories. No. The alternative is in their past life, you know, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't know because I don't subscribe to the theory. No, the alternative is in their future life, they will pay the penalty. Yes. Not their past life. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. And is that it? is what many people say. Yes. That, uh, you so you do about something to now, you. it's yeah. going to come back to get you in your future life, right? Yeah, yeah. You do something good now and you get punished for it. Oh, that's because you did something bad in your past life. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so forth, right? There's, yeah. there's all these explanations that come up that seem, you know, logical to the human mind, but are not very logical when you consider love at all. Mm. And, uh, and they are the explanations that are given as yes. to why karma applies beyond the grave. Yes. Rather than just, you know, right now and immediate. Yes. Mm. And Janie <coughs> herself says that she believes that the life that we have between lives <laughs> Gives us so this review period. The review. Yeah. So we can review our current life and decide what tasks. So she's saying we willfully decide what tasks we will accomplish in the next one to lessen the karmic load. So is, is by that is she then implying that she, you get to do your life review, you go, look, I did some really terrible stuff while mm-hmm. I was on earth. So this time when I go back, I'm going to do all this good stuff to try and offset. Ironically, when you hit the earth, you can't remember what you decided. No, so <laughs> it seems a little, but, but I suppose um, people with this belief believe that somehow you, you even though you're not conscious, of what you're going to do, you are going to do it anyway. There's some kind yeah, of destiny that you... Yeah, they believe in destiny, fate and all other kinds of things. And generally. so it doesn't really matter what you decide because it's going to be what you decided later, before you came do, back anyway. do what you decided it came to do, yep. which I can't agree with. It's pretty obvious in the earth that there's a lot of people deciding to do bad things. Yeah. And uh, and they obviously have done their review and come back and decided to do even I'm more bad do things. Bad things yeah. <laughs> so well, what's going on there, right? Yeah, yeah, the majority yeah. of people seem to do bad things. So, yeah. so that seems to, yeah. you know, nullify that idea of course none of these ideas are in harmony with love no and none of them for are in many harmony reasons. with logic either by the way no or love and as a result uh, you know they're not true they're just yeah. they're just philosophies of men trying to explain certain things. it's quite unkind to think that a person can be down like here on earth zero awareness groping around in the dark then get to have a brief period of full knowledge and only to return to that same to feeling in the dark of groping around, of searching for, for and answers. And then they created these concepts of, oh, there's a higher self that actually knows what's going on. And then there's the lower self, the animal self that doesn't. And there's like the unconscious self and the subconscious self. And then there's the real self. And, and there's a convolution of complexities that are added to the belief systems in order to explain away why certain events occur. Yeah, it all, all sounds like rationalisation to get away from pain. To it me. is. It is yeah. rationalisation. And it is rationalisation to compensate for all the wet facts of what the illogical, you know. For the, for the <laughs> what do they call that? The cognitive dissonance between, yeah. Bet- between what's happening and, and what, what, you, what you observe happening and what's, what you believe in. What you believe is happening. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and many religions do this. Yeah. You know, many religions do this. It's not... And I include New Age philosophies as a religion because mm-hmm. most people treat it as such yeah. who are involved in it. And many religions do this. The, the Muslim faith does it. The Christian faith does it. The Buddhist faith does it. The yeah. Hindu faith does it. It's a, it's a common problem where we 
find all the problems where the world is telling us through reality that something's not true mm -hmm. and then we come up with a theory that would might might make it true that fits into our current understanding of what is true yeah. rather than just going no let's get rid of everything we believe yeah. is true and let's see how we go accepting what god says is true because that's yeah. obviously what is true <laughs> yeah 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 maybe we're a bit emotionally invested in this whole definitely thing. terribly yeah. emotionally invested and janie is very emotionally invested in these belief systems yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. To her own detriment. <laughs> yeah. As, yeah, uh, as it so. is for yeah. most people. Yeah. All right. Another way that this teaching of karma is flawed from God's perspective is that the belief in karma triggering reincarnation, as inferred by New Age philosophy, demonstrates a complete ignorance of the law of compensation. Of course. Because the law of compensation states that you're immediately paying the penalties anyway. Mm -hmm. So why do you need to come back to earth to pay the penalties? Mm -hmm. And why do you need to come back to earth to learn anything when, when in, you're in, as soon as you've passed, you know straight away where you are. And if you become aware, you know why you're there. Yeah. So why do you need to come to earth to learn all that? You don't. And, and while, um, Again, it's difficult for me because I, I don't feel that Jane has expressed herself particularly clearly, but she seemed, she's inferring that the idea of this, this delineation between acts and then compensation that she sees Christianity and Islamic faith have, so you act a certain way and then in the afterlife you either get the good consequences or the bad ones. To me, really, what you've just explained about the New Age philosophy that you you are here, you do a bunch of stuff, you get to go and review it, and then the next life is either reward or compensation for the past life. Mm -hmm. To me, that's no different. There's a delineation. There's, there's a yeah, there's teaching a that there's a delineation between cause and effect and compensation. What she's saying is that she gets the effects immediately. So she's actually believing that her nice life now is the result of her good choices now, right. not seeing the true effects of her choices which are very degrading to her own soul because she's, they are invisible to her. So, so one of the things is that she believes, she's saying that one of the things that she, I'm mistaken about is that the karma is, is not immediate. I, I've never said karma isn't immediate. Mm -hmm. I've always said that karma is immediate, mm -hmm. but, but the majority of people do not notice its immediacy, including, ironically, the Damn. very woman who emailed us about the topic. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Mm. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying that for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so no one who passes from earth in an unloving state can actually ever return to earth except ever. in, in while any form. While they remain in an unloving while state. While they're in an unloving state. They can return in a form of spirit. Of spirit. So yep. in other words, they can overcloak, obsess or yes. possess somebody. Yes. They can influence somebody as a spirit being, but they cannot actually return to earth yeah. at all, ever, yep. Yep. in a physical state. Mm -hmm. while they remain unloving yeah yeah <laughs> so so yeah. that negates any necessity to learn anything because they're already they've already learned how to be loving there yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly and and anyone who passes from the earth in an unloving state must either compensate or repent for their unloving actions before they become loving saying. yeah 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 and only people in a soul union state which is which a is... very ex a state of extreme love mm -hmm can mm -hmm. actually, and who have received God's love to that condition, yep. can actually return to the planet. Yeah. And yeah. at this stage, there's been yeah. like 14, seven people, seven, seven souls, souls, 14 people. Yeah. And that <coughs> involves engaging a lot of laws, a lot more complex laws than we've discussed here of today. Course. As an of course. an understanding of those laws. Yes, and we're, we're at some stage talk about all of those laws but but honestly we're finding at this point that it's pointless to talk about those laws when these very basic laws are completely misapplied and under, yeah. misunderstood yeah we need yeah. to firstly understand them and apply them yeah. before and receive some of god's love so you have the awareness yeah. and knowledge of the other laws yeah but the basic principle is god's designed such a universe that we can grow in love while Without. we're on earth, when we pass from the earth. And, and we the, will not return to earth. We don't have to return to earth to live and in fact, And in fact, God's general goal is that we will not return mm -hmm. to earth at all, ever. Mm -hmm. The only reason why 14 have is because it's a part of what they believe is God's purpose for the earth to learn the truth. Yeah. And, and that's the only reason why they have returned. Yeah. There's no other yeah. reason. Yeah. And it's certainly not to pay any compensatory effects with bad behaviour or any of those other things. Yeah. 
and no other person on this planet has ever returned. And no spirit in the spirit world has ever returned other than those people. Mm. So, you know, we need to be categoric about that. Yeah. And in fact, the spirits in the sixth sphere and above, uh, the, sorry, the seventh sphere and above know that to be certain. The spirits in the sixth sphere and below don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, because the earth is in the first sphere condition mostly, most spirits who communicate with earth are only in the first sphere or to, up to the sixth sphere condition. And as a result of that, most of the information being passed to earth on the subject is in error. Mm. Unfortunately, most people on earth believe the error, yeah. which is a part of the problem and one of the reasons why we came to earth to, <laughs> to <laughs> circumvent the error. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, but there are spirits, people who have lived on earth, who pass into the spirit world, who don't want to stay there and they come back to earth and they perpetuate these teachings. They come back to earth not by reincarnation, mm -hmm. but by possession, obsession and influencing of people. Mm -hmm. yep. And they perpetuate these ideas of karma in yes. this Eastern sort of understanding of it. Yes. And reincarnation, don't they? Yes. And in fact, what they found is if they perpetuate the idea and the people on earth believe it, it made it easier for them to overcloak and influence those particular people. Mm -hmm. And many of them are trying to influence those people in a positive way it, as a part of what they believe is their karmic debt. Unfortunately, yeah. in it's other messy, words, the it? spirit is coming to earth, believing itself to have to come to earth to release it while it's classifying as its karmic debt. Yeah. In other words, court law of compensation issues, not yes not cause and effect issues. So mm -hmm. stop. let's stop calling it karmic debt no, and let's call it what it is. The law of compensation causes them to believe that they have to come back to earth to correct their bad behaviour. Yep. They come back to earth, they overcloak people on earth. They found that it's easier to overcloak people on earth while those people believe they are the person who's come back to overcloak them. Yes. <laughs> so when people do like past life regression and stuff correct. like that, they open up. They open themselves spirits. up to spirits. Uh, spirits come along and go, Excellent. Excellent. Now I can now I can connect with you and, and talk through you and yeah. say the things I need to say and try to resolve, try to my, resolve unresolved my unresolved emotional earth. issues. Yep. None of these things has to occur mm -hmm. for the spirit to go through its unresolved issues, no. but the spirit believes it has to occur yeah. and so it engages the process. Yeah. And unfortunately, this causes a huge amount of damage on earth to other people. Yeah. So it actually, what they find is that they look at their spirit body as they're doing it, their spirit body continues to degrade in its condition yes. while the spirit itself is trying to increase or improve its own condition, yeah. which is very sad, yeah. very sad to think you're doing something good only to see the result being worse and worse yeah. and worse. Very bad. And that creates huge amounts of confusion in these spirits and it's very damaging for them. If they understood that they do not need to come back to earth to pay any yeah. price or yeah. any penalty for anything that they've done wrong and they understood that they can engage two law or three two or three laws the law of compensation is the law they're forced to engage mm -hmm. or they can repent and forgive for the things they've done with god mm -hmm. and they'll be able to get beyond their current condition without returning back to earth then it would be both relieving to the earth yeah and also relieving to those spirits who are sincere about their own progress yeah yeah Absolutely. Yeah. So it's such a sad thing that this teaching of reincarnation causes many, and this is only one of the negative effects of the teaching on the spirits and on people uh, with people on earth. Mm -hmm. There is a huge amount of childhood, child suffering, yeah. particularly disease-based suffering, sickness-based suffering in children that is caused by the teaching of reincarnation, mm -hmm. by spirits who passed with those particular diseases over cloaking and possessing or influencing those children to event so much through their physical spirit body's yeah. operation that their physical body finishes up with the same disease that the spirit passed with. Yeah. So there, there's huge amounts of problems yeah. with that. And that can well, happen because a spirit is either trying to um, reincarnate basically via that newborn yeah. or because they do feel that they have unresolved issues from the earth that they want to fix Cor up they think they correct. want to correct they think they want to when really they're just addictively avoiding the pain correct. of compensation they're avoiding a good cry yes <laughs> basically yeah. that's what's happening they're avoiding a good expression of emotion in the state they're currently in yep 
they're resistive, they're not humble, yep. similar to Janie, yep. not humble, resistive to experiencing her true emotional condition. And as a result, they try to express that condition through people on earth. Mm -hmm. Or to somehow influence people on earth to do undo, it better or for them to undo did. things, yeah. when in fact they end up actually physically affecting the children that they are influencing. Yes. Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. And if, if, if any person has ever lived in the spirit world true, could truly examine the full consequences of false beliefs uh, in the spirit world and the effect that those false beliefs have on spirits which also affect the earth, mm. they would never, never engage a false belief on mm. this planet. Mm -mm. Ever. They'd much rather be agnostic and have no belief <laughs> yeah. than engage a false one. Yeah. Right. If yeah. they truly understood the effects of their false beliefs. Yeah. And reincarnation is a false belief, like all other false beliefs, that have terribly traumatic negative effects upon the people who believe it in the long run, but also upon the people they influence in their belief mm. and also try to harm. Unfortunately, they finish up harming in their belief. Yeah. And, and it's terrible. It's a terrible thing. And that's why I can't say enough about false beliefs. Mm -hmm. False beliefs are terribly traumatic yeah. to people on earth. They stay with people on earth well after they've passed for many millennia in many cases. Mm -hmm. And they unfortunately don't need to be in those places that they are in because they just feel like they have to hold on to these false beliefs. Yeah. And this is the problem that Janie faces. She wants to hold on to these false beliefs. And, and while she holds on to these false beliefs, there are going to be many negative effects, not only to her future life, but also to her life currently that she doesn't and unfortunately is not currently aware of even, that she will become, have to become, in fact, aware of at some point in her future. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. Mm. There was one final thing that we wanted to talk about with regard to current teachings of karma and reincarnation, and that was just about... Um, there are a lot of people on earth who don't feel very satisfied with themselves. They'd like to avoid being themselves. There yeah. are people who feel a bit empty because of some unresolved emotions Lonely, from their own childhood. Lack of Lonely, approval. Feel not very special, not very extraordinary. Yep. Um, they're seeking, so they seek out different things like past life regression, different spiritual movements. Yes. Um, or they just sort of kind of absent themselves. Sometimes they have a near-death experience yes. um, and they don't actually want to come back very much yeah. <laughs> to their life. And this, because there's so many spirits who feel that overcloaking someone... Is essential to their progress. Yes, which is essentially what they're doing. They might call it reincarnating yeah. or working out their karmic debt, but essentially they're overcloaking someone. Mm. Because there's these emotional injuries in people on earth who want to kind of avoid themselves, and there's these spirits who are perpetuating this... Oh, and spirits who are willing to take power over people who avoid themselves. Yes. Then we see people who are re reincarnated, believing that they have reincarnated. Well, they, don't they that, call them walk-ins and things like that also occur? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the peop and the spirits believe that they are reincarnating, I meant. Um, yeah. And so this is terrible for the people on earth because yes. they don't engage with their will. They don't learn all the lessons about their will. They end up passing into the hells with terrible amounts of work to do with compensation and not only that there is no idea of their own identity yeah that they have given up their identity for somebody else's identity yeah and this is a very damaging thing to do in fact god one of the reason why god gave us free will was to actually learn about who we truly are and the problem is when you give yourself up like this yeah. you don't finish up learning who you truly are yeah, yeah like we could go on for years literally yeah. about the negative consequences of the belief of false beliefs and in particular, the false belief of reincarnation. Mm -hmm. You go on for years about how damaging it is. And it always surprises me when I get emails talking about it from people because, because our personal experience over 2000 years has been observing the terrible damage yeah. that false beliefs of any kind mm -hmm. have had upon humanity in, this, in the spirit world and, and for many thousands of years, unfortunately. And if people knew how damaging it was to retain false beliefs, they would be far more critical and far more open and far more circumspect about um, absorbing new belief systems that are presented on earth, yeah. it, it, you know, rather than just 
absorbing them because they meet some kind of human emotional demand, yeah. uh, which is addictive based demand yeah. to, to have some kind of satisfied feeling. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, you know, like honestly, we could speak about the terrible, terrible consequences of the reincarnation beliefs as they apply to spirits and people on earth, which we will do mm -hmm. when we present the reincarnation philosophy as a as a philosophy that we'll talk about in the FAQ set settings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that was all the feedback that we had for Janie. Mm. Um, now, Janie, so we understand that it's probably going to be hard for you to accept a lot of what we've said, and that uh, given your emotional condition, it's highly likely you want to argue or completely be condescending with us and dismiss us completely. And we would recommend to you that you do neither and instead try to obtain an open soul and open heart to some of the things we've said, because, because I can assure you that I know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes not only to your condition, but also to the teachings of reincarnation, karma and these laws. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and while you don't have to trust that, my suggestion is that at least look at the fact that you have not received God's love, receive some of God's love and using some of the things we talk about how to do. And then you will start to see the errors of these particular belief systems and also some of the errors that you cho choose to engage in your daily life, which are harming your condition. Mm -hmm. So thanks for your time and uh, thanks for the time of the people who listened to this feedback session. Hopefully it's benefited quite a lot of people. And hopefully it's benefited people to understand more about the two laws, the law of cause and effect and the law of compensation. Thank you very yeah. much for your time. Pleasure.